Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we irritate professional engine builders everywhere. This is a Marine 440. It came from a boat. Up until very recently, it was still dressed with all of this stuff. Fancy Marine exhaust manifolds, bell housing adapter there for an outdrive, aluminum deep sump oil pan with little baffly thingies in there, and reverse rotation camshaft. It was also full of rainwater. Okay, being full of rainwater isn't exactly ideal, but well, I pretty much got away with it, so that's pretty cool. I've actually shown this engine on video a couple times before, although it's been quite a while. This is the 440 destined to go in the toolbox charger. My original genius plan was to put a belt-driven blower on the thing, but, um, well, I sold the car and that's not happening. It's just getting a performance camshaft and a four-barrel carb, and in it goes. This engine was part of a matched pair in a larger boat, probably some kind of awful fishing boat. In those applications, one engine turns clockwise, and the other engine turns counterclockwise. This was the counterclockwise one. I actually had three of these engines. I got all of them for free. Free is the right price. Anyway, scrappers stole the other two, so this is all I have left. Reverse rotation engines are interesting. They actually use almost all of the same components. The crankshaft, pistons, and rods are exactly the same. The special camshaft is really all it takes to make this work. That and a special distributor, by which I mean a small block distributor. I think, and some kind of weird spacer adapter extension thing to make it fit. Then of course you'd have to have the special starter to spin it backwards, and that's it. Unlike industrial engines, this engine uses conventional 452 heads. The only thing that seems to be a little weird are these hex plugs, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I have a theory this engine may have been rebuilt. I'm not sure if the cam was original or not, but it's got a three bolt timing set, which is interesting with random hardware store bolts, and that is a dual roller. That's the sort of thing you'd find in like a Max Wedge engine or a six pack engine, one of those. It had a fancy rebuildable mechanical pump as well. I'm sure that's a special boat piece. My plan for this engine from the beginning has been to just strip all the boat parts, change out the cam so it spins the correct direction and call it a day. Unfortunately, there's supposed to be one little issue with that, which I don't seem to have. This is my somewhat destroyed six-pack crankshaft. See those lines there? They're supposed to direct oil away from the rear seal to prevent horrible, awful leakage. Everything I read online said that I would have to remove these lines and punch them the other direction on this reverse rotation crankshaft to make it all work. If I didn't, it would probably spew oil everywhere. However, this marine crankshaft has no lines at all. So that's interesting. Kind of looks like crap where that old rope seal was sitting against it for decades, so I probably will have to clean this up, but apparently that's not going to be an issue. So I guess I took this engine apart for no reason at all. But, you know, checking everything is obviously a good idea, and all the horrible milky oil wasn't great, so I did remove all that. I think we got a good one. Obviously, there are some visible lines here, but nothing that can catch a fingernail. It's not just good, it's good enough. Now, I've said many times that the key to being good at anything is knowing what you can get away with. And in engine building land, I kind of do. Look at these bearings. They look great. All right, sure, there are some little shinies, but really nothing major. And I don't think it's been really many hours since this engine was overhauled. The heads look almost brand new, other than the rust. So I really think everything here is going to be fine. Cam bearings. Um, yeah, they're fine. I've seen so much worse than this. Yeah, good to go. I'm going to give this thing a fresh hone and call the block ready after a really good cleaning. I don't even think I'm going to do the freeze plugs. They're fine. Now, pistons are a bit of a different story. Some of them look like this. But some of them look like this, like little bits of debris were bouncing around in the chambers. And one of them looks like this. I don't even know what to do with this. Yeah. Most of the valves are beautiful. Good to go. This one, not so much, but I think it's just debris jammed in the seat. We'll see. They may well need a couple valves. And they need a set of springs to match the ridiculous camshaft I'm going to put in here. Otherwise, a cleaning, fresh seals, and we're good to go. Oh look, regular Felpro Rebuilder head gaskets. That's what I'm going to put back in there. Someone will probably complain about that too. 
There's a whole smattering of shiny new Edelbrock stuff here to go on this engine. Well, plus a nice distributor. And this dual plane Performer 440 intake, which I have been carrying around for like a decade now. So, back to annoying engine builders. I'm going to reuse as many factory pieces or, you know, pieces I remove from this thing as physically possible to save time and money. These bearings may well be better than any I can buy. They're labeled O10 on the back side. It's like an ink stamp instead of a regular factory marking. They also say HD on them. I've never seen this before, but I'm going to say they're good. I'm not going to mic the crank out and check the tolerances. I'm not going to measure the rod bolts for stretch. I'm not going to chase all the main bolt holes out with a tap. I'm not going to buy ARP studs. I'm going to give this thing a hone and a set of used pistons, hopefully, and send it. It has come to my attention recently that I don't know everything. And I know that's going to come as a shock to everyone watching my videos. In my recent stroker build video, I was informed in the comments that I'm supposed to measure the pin fit for those pistons with the floaters, you know, and I didn't do that. I put them together and they felt good and good is good enough. But because I didn't follow the engine rebuilder machinist guide to the last letter, I'm an idiot and I'm ruining the hobby. And this is why everyone puts stupid Hemis in things now. When you do things like, I don't know, build classic cars, and you put it on video and put it out there in the world for the entertainment of others and for a record of what you're doing. People are going to come out of the woodwork and tell you you're a moron and tell you that you're not doing it right, and tell you you have no idea, tell you you don't know how to double clutch, tell you you don't know how to check pin fit. These are the kinds of people you don't need in your life. Do I sound salty? I might sound a little salty. My point, if I have one, this isn't rocket surgery. It just isn't. Check your parts. Evaluate your engine assembly and make sure it's to your satisfaction. If you're putting an engine together and you have a problem, is the world gonna end? Mm, probably not. You might have to put it together again and you will have learned something. And learning something, I think, is what all of this crap is about. If you're gonna make 800 horsepower, the procedure should be a little different than what I do. If you're going to make 800 horsepower, don't watch my videos and don't take my advice. I guess the real lesson is don't take anything anyone says on the internet seriously. And that's all I have to say about that. Here's a quick look at the toolbox charger. I've actually made a little bit of progress on it. Yeah, well, in fits and starts over the last like six months. And it's far from done, you know, but we're getting places. My next big task is to remove the K-frame and fully rebuild the front end, brakes, suspension, what have you. Evan just finished exactly that same thing for the blue 73 charger at Rocket. It's weird building two of them in parallel. I'm really hoping Tom just randomly has a set of pistons that'll work for this thing sitting in the back room. I'm not holding my breath, but that would be great. But hey, with that solved, this is a really easy way to end up with a strong forged crank 440 that makes a respectable number of horse ponies. Ooh, I thought of another way to annoy professional engine builders. I'm gonna use this camshaft that's been sitting in my shed for the last forever. Uh, it's gonna need a cleaning. How'd this box end up full of tree pieces? Weird. I was gonna use the lifters too, but unfortunately they also got rained on and... Nah. Look at that. That light surface rust comes right off with a little bit of WD-40, some super fine steel wool, a brass brush would help, but I can't find that. Obviously there's some more little patches to go after there, but this thing will be just fine. This is a big mother thump that I pulled out of a totally stock 383 with crappy cylinder heads and springs and manifolds. And it really didn't work very well in that. But it's gonna be awesome in this 440. The surface finish after wiping off that rust is actually better than the comp cams you buy now. Figure that one out. Anyway, that's what's going on with the 440 for the toolbox charger. My next task is going to be cleaning up these horribly rusty sea solid rocker arms for my 360 because I'd kind of like to get that going. Look at these beautiful chunks of unobtainable scrap metal. Some of them even move. It's, well, yeah, okay, one moves. That's pretty good. Well, that's going to have to do it for your local talentless hack Mopar engine assembler. Thank you very much for watching. You know, if you did. And remember, dream big, fart loud.